What's important to know is that before we presented to Shigeru San, the CEO of TDK, we actually got a really good uh, team, really supporting at CXO level and below, making sure that everything we were doing made sense for TDK at all levels. In the investment committee, we managed to get the best possible investment committee with our EVP of corporate planning, our CFO and our CTO. And the three are basically the best proxy for making sure that the TDK strategy is completely aligned with any investments we are going to make. TDK is no stranger to innovations and uh, TDK has been for the last 85 years innovating and reinventing uh, itself. Uh, it started with the ferrite materials back in 1935. You know all about the business to consumer B2C with the tapes uh, and then back to B2B with uh, sensors and batteries and components. Uh, now we are looking at moving towards a solution selling. So which means that we are looking at really the end-to-end -end use cases for our customers. So when we looked at TDK Ventures as a corporate VC of TDK, it was all about making sure that we understand what markets we want to get into, which we are not in today, with technologies we don't have today, but we want to understand how they could help our customers bring, um, make them more successful. At TDK Ventures, we are really uh, keen to help entrepreneurs. So in a way, we see the entrepreneurs as our customers. We want to make sure that it's not just capital that we are uh, bringing to them, but actually a lot of what we call TDK goodness, which is like a Chinese menu of services and help we can provide, and they can decide over time which ones they want and which ones they don't need. Uh, very recently, we had our first portfolio company having a kickoff meeting where we had more than a dozen teams in TDK coming and pitching what they could contribute to the startup. And the CEO was basically saying, I love everything you're showing, but I'm going to go with the top three that I think we should do right away. And that's exactly what we were looking for. We were not looking for them to adopt everything that we can do, but actually only choosing what really matters for them, either to accelerate our success or to improve the probability of success. You're asking about the five steps to corporate VC. I don't know them. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually about the reason why you want to do it. What is the goal? In TDK, we looked at doing the corporate VC to really do explorations, which is about markets we're not in, but we believe will be very big, in technologies we don't have, that we want to learn about. And so as a consequence, we really designed the corporate VCs around very fast decision making to invest in startups that would help us in the exploration phase. That's not something that's a five steps, and actually along the way of proposing this corporate VC, we received many no's. And so my guidance for anyone that wants to build a corporate VC inside a company that does not have one, is to really take every no as an opportunity to ask why. Why does it not work? Is it because of the goals? Is it because of something that's much more logistics? And understanding these no's are very important to actually refine the design of the corporate VC to the point where it becomes a yes. So I don't have a five steps uh, plan for you guys, but what I can say is think about the why you are doing it, make sure you're very clear about this, communicate about the why, and once you have all the feedback, including no's, that can actually become the opportunity to understand the why it's not working quite yet for the mothership, you're going to end up with a design that works for your company. The first two investments we made was around micromobility, and they were very complementary. One was Starship, which is a delivery robots within three miles. So think about moving things around within three miles. The next one was Wheels, which is micromobility with safety, inclusion, sustainability first mindset with e-bikes, which again is about moving people around within three miles. And so when we look at both um, portfolio companies that we have invested in, we have a very nice spectrum and nice view about micromobility where we can understand very early on about regulatory changes, consumer trends, enterprise requirements. And, and with this view, we may actually have a lens of five years ahead versus waiting for this market to develop and then we have to react quickly. 
here we can actually start to understand the market even before it's a market and, and, and really adapt our roadmap and our technology way ahead of time so that when the market actually starts to pick up, we are ready. And actually you are not more than ready, we are actually uh, uh, sort leaders.